welcome to another yoga video with Val. Today we're going to do a practice for when it's really hot and you feel that you need to cool down. So um, on a hot day you might want to choose to do your yoga practice at the beginning or the end of the day when it is cooler. You should always make sure your yoga environment has fresh air so do open a window and get some airflow. Make sure you've got some water. And we're going to be doing a breathing practice. We're going to start with it called Sitali. So with breathing practices, sometimes it's worthwhile making sure you've got some tissues to hand. If you struggle to sit on the mat, consider sitting on a chair. Consider using a block. Or you might even want to have a little meditation stool. So this is a very simple meditation stool. Um, they don't all come with hinged legs. It might be something that you can knock up and um, it allows you obviously to sit. But also if you struggle with your knees and you want to sit in Varasana, hero posture, you can place it over the top of the feet and sit for your meditation or for practicing hero posture. So I'm going to place that to one side. Let's have a look at our Sitali breath. So Sitali is a cooling breath. You bring the air in over the tongue and you breathe out through the nose. In Sitali breath, we curl the tongue. You might struggle to curl the tongue. It might be something that you can't do, in which case just breathe with an open mouth, maybe with the tongue extended slightly. If you want to know if you can do this with your tongue or not, then perhaps look in a mirror. Okay, so breathing in with the Satali breath, we breathe in over the tongue, taking the air down, brings the air over the tongue and um, then your breath contains the moisture and the tongue is a very large organ to draw the cool air over. Then we breathe out through the nose. So it's not going to be possible for me to do the breathing practice and talk at the same time. So I'll do a couple of breaths so you can um, get the idea. Okay, so Satali breath in over the tongue with the tongue um, curled if you can and out through the nose. So find yourself in a seated position that's going to be comfortable for you. Aware of your sitting bones lengthening through the spine. And then if you're happy to you're closing your eyes so you can bring your focus into the body. And start by tuning into your natural breath. We breathe all day long, but we very rarely pay attention to it. It's an automatic response. It happens. When our yoga, we bring our focus to our breath. Tuning in to your in and out breath. And when you're ready to begin your Satali breath, open the mouth, curl the tongue, and breathe in over the tongue. As you finish the in-breath, close the mouth, and breathe out through the nose. Opening the mouth, curling the tongue to breathe in through the mouth. Closing the mouth at the end of the in-breath to breathe out through the nose. Your in-breath coming in over the curled tongue. Your out-breath through the nose. Steady and control the pace of your breath. 
Steady in breaths over the tongue, drawing in the cool breath. Closing the mouth. And breathing out through the nose. This is a practice you might want to start with just five or six breaths using the Satali breath and then build up the practice. Some of you do sitting peacefully on your own. The breath is something you carry with you, a tool to help calm you and you can help cool the body by using the Satali breath. Let's take a look at working into some yoga postures, some asana practice. We're going to start by coming into cat. So bring yourself onto your hands and your knees. I'm just going to move the water bottle out the way. What we're going to do once we've done our cat breath is stick the leg out to the side. So I just need to move away my props. Then I've got the space to take the leg out to the side. So bringing yourself into cat, palms down to the mat, fingers and thumbs spreading wide. Try and have that middle finger forwards, wrists directly under your shoulders, knees under your hips, knees slightly apart, having the length of a spine between the palms and the knees. When we're ready, we allow the tummy to release down as we bring the gaze forwards, chest through the arms slightly. When it's warm, work nice and steady, drawing chin in, drawing tail under, lifting high. Draw the belly in towards the spine. Think of working with your breath, breathing in to allow the belly to relax and release. Gaze coming forward, chest forward. Breathing out to arch, drawing chin in, tail under. Keep that breath nice and steady, breathing in, looking forward. Breathing out to arch. Work in the way that's right for you. Getting the maximum amount of flexibility through your spine. So really getting your spine working. We'll make this the last one. So after you've arched, bring yourself to a flat back position. Bring the weight off those wrists for a moment, particularly if you struggle with the wrists. You might want to come to tall kneeling rather than sitting on your heels, wherever's right for you. Give those hands a little work. Now, if you struggle with your wrists, you can do the next bit on forearms instead of onto your hands. We're going to take the leg out to the side and work into a hip rotation. So bring yourself back into cat, or maybe you're down on your forearms. Okay, we're going to take one leg out to a side, it doesn't matter which. You want to try and have that heel in alignment with the hip. We lift the foot a little way from the floor and we do some circles. Make these nice, slow, steady circles, maybe five in one direction and then five in the other direction. Bringing the knee in as you've finished. If you need to bring the weight up off those wrists, please do. I'm just going to turn. I haven't got enough space to go the other way. So the leg goes out to the side, weights into the hands a little and into that balancing knee. Putting a prop underneath the shin if you need to protect that knee. We lift the foot. Five little circles in one direction and then changing to do circles in the other direction. When you're ready, bringing that leg in. 
Have a little fold back into child posture, forehead down, hands back by the feet. Little curl up and relax. And steadily draw yourself out. Might feel the body warmth from having curled down in child. We're going to come up to standing next. So bring yourself up to standing. Find a position where you can take your arms out wide to the side. I'm going to work into this corner. We're going to be taking the hands together in prayer overhead. And ideally you want to see that. So thinking about whether you want to have those feet in together in your Tadasana posture or whether you want to have them under your hips. If your feet are under your hips, centre line of hips, centre line of knee, centre line of ankle, it's going to give a little space for airflow around the body. Standing up nice and tall. Make sure you've not locked out your knees. Feel the weight through the soles of your feet, that sense of grounding. Do you need to adjust through your pelvis? Do you need to pull the tummy in a little, try and tone the tummy slightly and lengthen through the back? Now the arms to relax at your sides as you draw your spine up towards the ceiling, chin level. Relax and release those shoulders. We're going to breathe in and out through the nose if it suits you for this set of movements. So our arms are released by our sides. We're going to breathe in, taking the arms up around the outside, bringing the palms together and breathing out hands in prayer down the centre line of the body. Keep this as a nice, slow, steady breath. In breath, stretching up, palms come together and out breath, hands drift down the centre of the body. We'll do five in total. In stretching up. Our breath, arms coming down the centre line of the body. You go for number four. This is number five for me. You stop whenever you get to five. In breath, arms around the outside. Out breath, arms down the centre. Palms together in prayer. And when you're ready, we'll move into a forward bend. So we're going to work into a flow of our forward bend using that arm position we've just used in our Tadasana. I'm going to change my position slightly. Okay, you should hopefully still see what's going to happen. How you come up out of this forward bend is going to depend on your lower back. If you're happy with your lower back, if it's nice and strong, you can come up with a flat back, otherwise uncurl. So taking our breathing practice into this forward bend, breathe in, stretch out, palms come together, breathe out, palms come down and we hinge forward, soften those knees if you need to. Bring your palms or your fingertips down to the mat, so knees are as bent as you need to to come into the mat. Breathe in, stretch up, looking forwards. Breathe out, release into your forward bend. Breathe in, either uncurling or bringing your arms up to the ceiling into prayer. So if your arms aren't up to the ceiling into prayer, breathe in and stretch up into prayer. Out breath, hinging forwards. Palms or fingertips come down to the mat. In breath, lengthen that spine, looking forwards. Out breath, relax and release into your forward bend. Breathing in, either stretch up or uncurl. Use an in breath to bring the arms up, palms together. Out breath, hinging forwards. Palms coming down or fingertips to the mat. 
and breath to extend the spine, stretch forward. Out breath to relax and release it. In breath coming up, it might be an uncurl. When you're ready to breathe in again, those arms are going to extend to the ceiling palms together. As you breathe out, you hinge forwards into your forward bend, hands coming down. When you're ready to breathe in, you look forwards, coming up slightly away from the legs. Out breath, softening into your forward bend. In breath to come up in the way that's right for you. Make sure we're stretching up those palms together. This is going to be the last one. So in we're tall. Out we fall forwards. In breath we look up. Out breath we hinge into our forward bend. In breath, we uncurl or stretch up. And this time as we breathe out, we relax into our Tadasana. Take a moment. Allow your breathing to return to normal. We're going to stretch those legs next. You'll need to find a position where you can bring your hands down to the mat because we're going to have a lunge and a hamstring stretch. So find that position where your hands can be down to the mat. I'm just going to see where I can come to on the screen so that's it. Wonderful. So we're going to go into a lunge. So your hands are down to the mat. I'm going to start with my right leg. I'm going to step back into a lunge. Front knees bent, back legs extended, and I'm looking forwards. Then I'm going to straighten the front leg and bring the back heel down towards the mat. It's not fully straight, there's a little bend in it still. So now I'm stretching into my hamstring. Relax and release the body forwards and look up. So working with this with the breath, if you're happy to. Out breath to straighten that front leg, head dropping down. In breath to move into that lunge. Out breath, stretching that front leg. In breath to look forwards, lunge. Out breath, straightening that front leg. In breath into our lunge. I do think we want to do five of these. Out breath, hamstrings stretching, stretching into that back heel. In breath, lunge. When you've done your five, you're going to bring that right foot forwards. And we'll do five of these into the left leg. So as you're ready, Left leg stretches back so that we're into the lunge. Then we straighten that front leg as much as we can, take the back heel down towards the mat. So both legs are aiming to be straight in this position. We lunge, breathing in, looking forwards. And as we breathe out, we try and lift those hips, straightening the legs. Breathing in, looking forwards. Breathing out, lift those hips, try and straighten those legs. Breathing in, look forwards, lunge. Breathing out, lift those hips. Last one, if you've um, if this is number five for you, so you breathe out to lunge. Breathe in. Oh, sorry, you breathe. <laughs> Breathe out to straighten the legs. You breathe in looking forwards. When you're ready to come out, both feet come together. Bring yourself up for a moment. So we're going to have a little bit of work into our dog posture now. 
Hands are going to come down to the mat again. Feet under the hips. Bring your hands down. Ideally get those palms flat if you can. Step back one leg and then bring the other to join it. So you're in dog posture. Look forwards, bringing your weight forwards into the hands slightly. And then encourage those heels down towards the mat, hips lifted. Breathe in to relax and release. Breathe out, pushing back into those hands, lifting those hips. In breath we soften. Out breath we stretch those hips up into top. Our breath, just sway forwards a little. Lifting those hips. Sorry, I've messed up the breathing again. Breathe in, release. Breathe out, lift those hips. This is the last one. If you want to stay in dog a little while, stay in dog a little while. When you're ready to come out, you can bring your feet in towards your hands or your hands in towards your feet. Steadily uncurl. Make sure your head doesn't feel swimmy and have a stretch up to the ceiling. Now release that. We're going to go into a twist next. We're going to do a nice open twist. So your feet are going to be a bit wider than your hips. We're going to take those arms wide as well. Have the elbows bent, palms facing in towards each other. When we twist, you can come up on the toes, okay, on one foot. So make sure you've got your lovely position, chest is open, elbows are wide. Palms are wide. Go to twist to the right first of all. So as I take my gaze round, I become aware of my right palm, come up on my left toes, and I go into my open twist. Breathing. Steadily bringing myself forwards. And the gaze goes to the left hand. Gonna come up on the right toes as I twist to the left. Breathing, thinking about being tall, working that twist into the left. Lowering that right heel as I bring myself forwards, gaze forwards. So turn to look at the right hand, turning right up on the left toes. Steadily drawing yourself forwards, left heel comes down. Take the gaze to the left hand as you're ready. Twisting left up on the right toes. Softening forwards, right heel comes down. Twisting to the right, look to the right palm. Up on the left toes. Bringing the left heel down as you come forward, bringing the gaze forward, turning to look into the left palm and twisting to the left. Bringing yourself forwards and the right heel comes down. Do this nice and gradually so that you don't feel dizzy. And if you can, we'll do five. So just steadily twisting to each side, bringing the whole body into that twist. Try and keep the arms up. I think this is the last one for me, turning the head to look into the right hand up on my left toes, twisting round to the right. Steadily coming forwards. Last one to the left. Coming to centre. Allowing those arms to relax and have a regal three. I'm going to bring those feet back in together. I'm going to work into a side bend, working with the breath. You'll want to have your feet maybe hip width. If you struggle with your balance, have your feet a little wider. 
We're going to be a swaying palm with the breath. It's going to involve working through those arms again. So stretch up to the ceiling. I'm just going to change my position slightly. Breathe in here as you breathe out, go over to the right. In breath to center, out breath to the left. In breath to center, out breath to the right. So we breathe in and move to our center position. We go into the side bend as we breathe out. Work this to work for you. In long and tall, out going over. Push the hips if you want to. In breath to come up. Out breath to go over, feel that sway, feel the movement of air, in breath stretching up, out breath to go over. Now ideally in breath to come up, we want to do five each side, out breath going over, in to stretch up, out breath going over, you can reach away with those hands, in to come up. Out to go over. Last in breath brings you up and then release those hands down as you breathe out. Do try and work with your own breath. It's quite difficult for me to set a breath rate for everybody and also of course I'm talking so I'm not working with the breath myself. Just make sure that your head doesn't go swimming. If you want to stay for an in and out breath in any of the positions, please do. So we're going to come down to the mat and we're going to do our cat balance. So bring yourself down to the mat. If you need something under your shin, make sure to protect that knee that you've got something for under your shin. I'm just going to check that I can stretch back without coming into contact with anything around me. So cat position, but with the knees together. The reason the knees are together is to bring our weight to centre. Try and have that flat back feeling. When you're ready, extending opposite foot to arm. Lengthen through the heel. Try and get a sense that your arm and your leg are in alignment with your spine. Looking at a point on your mat to keep you fixed. Holding those tummy muscles, don't allow your belly and lower back to collapse. Stretching from the heel to the fingertips. Breathing, lengthening. So you hold this balance for as long as works for you. We are going to do a second one, so whenever you're ready, once you're still under your control, come back. Do take a moment, that's my water, sorry. Do take a moment to bring your weight centred and then we'll work to the other side. So it's opposite leg to hand. So if my left arm stretched forwards, my right leg's extended. Try and find that position where you feel flat. Looking at a point on the mat. If you're working on finer positions, remember we're holding the tummy muscles. We're trying to keep the pelvis level. We're breathing, lengthening. Now how long you hold your balance will be varied. Try and come out of the balance as you feel you're still in control before you wobble. So your opportunity to try this to the other side Get the weight centred, stretch back through your heel, remember if you struggle with your wrist you could be on your knuckles. So if my left leg's lifted, the right arm lifts, straightening through. Breathing, lengthening, heel to fingertips, flat back. Trying to keep the spine nice and straight, lengthening the arm and leg in alignment with the spine. 
holding for as long as you're happy to. Releasing back to centre as it suits you to do so. Checking that you've got your weight balanced and centred, making any little adjustments you might feel you need. And then working to the other side. So if it's the right leg, it's the left arm. Lengthening, fingertips to heel. Looking at a point down on the mat to keep your balance. Breathing. Using those tummy muscles for stability. Keeping your lower back open. Trying to find a point of stillness. Releasing out when it suits you to do so. Don't feel you have to come back at the same time as me. If you want to repeat, please repeat. Just gonna go into our swan posture, bringing the head down towards the mat, bottom down towards the heels, arms are extended, weight off those wrists. If it's really warm and you want to take those knees apart so we're in more of a modified frog posture, we bring those elbows in. We can go into our frog instead, allowing a little bit of air space. Important thing is we're allowing that lower back to release. Bring yourself up as you're ready. We're going to do our cobbler stretch next. We're going to come round soles of the feet together. If you need to sit on a block, sit on a block. Now how close you have your heels to your body is down to you. You might have them drawn very much in and have your hands to your toes and still be able to sit upright. You might have your hands to your ankles to sit upright. You might have the heels away from the body. Try and be on your sitting bone. So even if you're on a block, try and make sure you've got your pelvis nice and upright. And wherever you are, sit tall. Chin level, shoulders relaxed. You can actively push your feet, soles of the feet together and encourage those knees down towards the mat. Make sure you're breathing. And we'll do our butterfly posture. So don't worry about having the hands onto the feet if they won't reach, if that gives you a bad posture. Okay, we're going to flap those knees, either holding on to those feet and toes, or even if you want to, hands behind the hips. You're going to bounce those knees up and down, try and keep the feet pushing together. And then bring yourself back into sitting nice and tall, encouraging those soles of the feet to push together as the knees drop open. As we're ready to release, we're going to take those hands underneath the knees, allow the feet to turn towards the mat and bring the knees in together. We're going to come down into our relaxation, our Shavasana posture. So bring yourself down onto your mat. If your lower back's tight and you want to keep your knees bent, feet flat to the floor, please do. Otherwise, extend those heels away. Our Shavasana should be a nice open posture, taking those hands a little away from the body, encouraging the palms up. Getting that lower back comfortable, spine in a nice straight line. Allowing the whole of the body to release onto the mat. If you're happy to, closing your eyes. Bring your attention to your breath. 
I'm breathing in and out through the night. Should be nice and cool down on the floor. It's usually cooler the lower you are. Lower back's comfortable. Spine in a nice straight line. Dropping through your hips and your shoulders. Checking the position of your head, chin level. Little length in the neck. Relaxing your face, releasing your jaw. With a gentle rise and fall through the front of the body with the breath. Letting go through your arms. Soft through shoulders, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, hands, fingers and thumbs. Encouraging those arms to release. If you feel you need to make any little movements, to get yourself comfortable, adjust as you need. Trying to keep this nice open posture. Encourage the air flow around the body. Where the in breath creating space and opening. The out breath relaxing and releasing down. Check your lower back still comfortable and you're relaxed across your tummy. Releasing in the hips, upper legs soft, space in your knees, lower legs relaxed, space in your ankles, soft through your feet and relax through all of your toes. In breath, creating space and opening. Out breath, relaxing, releasing and letting go. Spending a quiet moment with your breath. Whenever you're ready to wear bacon, just a little stretch and wriggle into hands and feet. Maybe a lengthening stretch through. And when you're ready, rolling onto one side to bring yourself up to sitting.
Breathing in, stretching. Releasing as you breathe. Namaste.